Hi guys, welcome back to Reese's where we have conversations on matter with people who care. Today I'm here with investment advisor Sharia Plowden. We're going to be talking about stocks, bonds, investing, and all those things that you could get involved in to help build generational wealth. And hopefully, not hopefully, because I know she will, simplify it, make it sexy, make it accessible so that any of you who are ever interested in getting into it will have a better idea of how to go about doing so. So Sharia, welcome to the show. Hi Rian, thanks for having me and welcome to my home. Thank you for having me. Sharia Plowden is a 28 year old proud past pupil of Holy Name Convent. She studied at Manchester University during a semester break, got an internship at JMMB for the NGL IPO, which is the first time a stock goes public. From this experience, she developed a love for investments and the then CEO of JMMB investments brought her back having completed her degree to work in the company permanent after four years she decided to amicably part ways and went on to manage over 100 million in assets at gem then she opted for a more private wealth experience at shepherd securities where she currently is she manages ultra high net worth clients providing them with tailor-made solutions for the individual financial need. When Shariel isn't giving financial advice, she's busy making Trinidad and Tobago a fintech hub as the corporate secretary of the Fintech Association. She also sits on the board as treasurer for Nestle Credit Union. So let's jump right into it, Shariel. Can you tell us what is investing? Investing, as according to my definition, is transforming your savings into wealth. So it's money that you would have set aside probably for you know to buy something to go on a trip but instead of using it for that purpose you're kind of delaying the gratification and you're putting it in an investment instrument as you mentioned like stocks like bonds and you're getting some interest on it that you can then now liquidate to point in the future or you can use returns from it to fund that goal or that original intention that you had for the money so there are lots of terms that we hear around investing can you tell me how does one and one of those terms is an investment portfolio how does one go about starting and then expanding the investment portfolio well so because investments you know it's a financial product you have to go through that whole kyc process so you have to have your two forms of idea proof of address and your proof of income once you have those documents you go to a broker and a broker is simply someone that facilitates the trade. Someone who goes out to the market and buys the asset for you on your behalf. And then they would custody it in your name. So once you open your account and you go to your broker with your documents, they will open up the brokerage account for you and then you would be able to purchase assets. So some brokers allow you to do it on your own, some brokers do it on your behalf. So it really also depends on yourself. So do you have the time? You know, is it a skill that you want to build and you would, you know, do it yourself. So when you open up your brokerage account and you start purchasing the assets now, then you would start building up your investment portfolio. So an investment portfolio can have a portfolio of stocks, a portfolio of bonds, a portfolio of both stocks and bonds. You know, you can have some mutual funds in there, some ETFs in there, index funds. So all those investment, those investment assets make up your investment portfolio. Understood. Is ETF not EIF? Mm. What did it happen that day? Eh? <laughs> Just as a sidebar off air. I, was, I told you this I was watching you while ironing. Yeah. And whenever you said something, I run and I jot it and I went back and iron. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, Henry. <laughs> yeah, that was like, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the ETF. I'm sorry, that's, that's all me. <laughs> all right. So, what are stocks? So, Stocks, I like to think about it like ownership into a company. So if you have stocks in Massey, you are now an owner of Massey. Now it doesn't mean to say you could go up in Massey Motors and be like, I want that one and you drive over to a car, right? Understood. But it means that when Massey makes profit, you are now entitled to that profit as a shareholder. Now again, you can't go to Massey head office and be like, hey, we my profits. I want 10 million. <laughs> run me, run me my check. Run me my money. No, Rihanna, calm down. They will formalize, the board will say, all right. So just as you would like pay your board members, you'd have a salary committee, a remuneration committee, the board of directors will come and say, all right, we are going to pay your shareholders 5% of these profits, or they'll translate it into dollar value. So they might, okay, you'll get $2.50, 
each for each number of shares that you own. So if I have twenty thousand and you have ten thousand, you will get ten thousand multiplied by the two dollars and fifty cents, and I will get ten thousand multiplied by the two dollars and fifty cents in a dollar value transferred to your bank account. So you get to share any profits. So you hear about profit sharing? That's what being a shareholder means. That's what owning stocks in a company means. That you get to share in the profits of the company. But on the other side, because not all companies pay dividends. That's what it's called. Some companies, Jesus said, you know what? This stock price is going to appreciate in value. So, you know, we always hear Elon Musk's network is now 100 million US dollars, or Mark Zuckerberg's network just dropped by 10 million dollars, and now he's worth, and they have like this billionaire hierarchy. So, what that essentially means is not that's not how much money they have cash in bank, but that's the price of their stock. Of their stock. Yes, correct. So, the amount of stocks that they own multiply by the stock price of that day that is what contributes to their net, net worth. worth right so it's the same in your personal portfolio so if i uh, going back to my example if you have ten thousand stocks and i have twenty thousand stocks and that stock price was fifty dollars uh, let's just say fifty dollars then you of course have um fifty thousand or five hundred thousand <laughs> sorry i found my math no. right and then i would have a hundred thousand as my oh sorry one million dollars as my net worth and if that stock price goes to a hundred dollars then of course our net worth would have doubled so on you're up. now a million i am now two million understand yeah, so, so if i mess in massey and massey stock goes up my net worth goes up correct oh wow i like that of course <laughs> that is like the multi great multiplier of investing you literally just buy this asset and hold it there and it appreciates in value, in value. And so do you Understood. You know, this is like buying land. I have a question when it comes mm -hmm. to the ones that provide dividends. Mm -hmm. If a uh, if a stock mm -hmm. is a dividend producing stock, mm -hmm. and it also goes up in value, mm -hmm. does that mean that I can? What is, what's the question? The question I'm trying to ask is: Is it is it an option or can I do both? As in, if I'm investing in a stock, it must it either be dividend providing or non dividend providing? And if it's dividend providing, then I cannot sell it later on for money so this is going to blow your mind so you make two money two ways from owning a stock through dividends <coughs> and through capital appreciation so you don't have to choose some some boards decide not to pay a dividend and reinvest the profits so the company could further grow and expand right which will ultimately increase the, the price of the stock Understood. so yes yeah, so it's not like a choice or some stocks they do both they pay dividend and the stock price appreciates in value. So most stocks in our local stock market pays dividends, right? And of course, the value can appreciate. Also, just be mindful, while a stock price can appreciate, it can also depreciate, right? And we will get into that as the conversation deepens. But, so to add the short answer to your question is, no, you don't have a choice. You don't have to choose, okay, dividends versus capital appreciation. You can get both. You know, from your portfolio. I like that. Right, listen, <laughs> when, I, when I started off in my career at age 21, and I realized, you mean to tell me that you could just buy this thing and just make money while doing nothing? Absolutely. I was, absolutely, I was like, listen, tell my degree, I don't need him anymore. I'm going to be a stockbroker. <laughs> That's how I got into it. And I've been doing this since. And like, I don't have a plan of stopping. And right? I wish, like you said, <laughs> that we knew these things younger right. not that i i don't live in regret and i think everything in my story brought me to where i am today not, right. not that i'm anywhere <laughs> fabulous but all i have to say if i had known this younger some of my clothes would have be stuck yeah some of these things that me and my ears are just the collecting dust could have been stuck somewhere collecting appreciating in value literally on my twitter bio and on my pins tweet it is literally before you buy the product, buy the stock. So before I buy a new iPhone or a new MacBook, I buy Apple stocks. Because the stock is cheaper than the product. The Apple stock is like 160 something dollars. My iPhone is like what? 1500 US? My MacBook is a lot more. <laughs> you know what stocks I can get? So before I buy the product, I buy the stock. So I love I that. It, yeah. Because if you're buying the product, because that's one of the things they say to you on those videos about investing. If you're buying the product, you believe in the company. Correct. So if you believe in the company, invest in it. I love it. Yeah, listen, it is the best thing. You look for companies that you know going to be around 
for the longevity, <laughs> right? You know, companies like Apple. So Apple now, okay, so smartphones, we're not too certain if it'll be around in the metaverse. You know, we're not 100% yet, but they're going into the cars. We're going to need cars. Even if it's self-driving cars, we're still going to need cars. So Apple is already future-proofing themselves. So we look for companies that are future. I'm an advocate Tesla investor. I would, if I could say so myself, an early Tesla investor, and it has all been very well for me because I said, you know what? At the end of the day, we are, when I was living in the UK and I was living in Germany, they put out mandates by 2040, 2050, they want to ban gas. Gas, cars. Cars, exactly. And that was since 2014. So me in my, you know, yeah, I was like, okay, so this is where the world is heading. I mean, I did not know that I would end up a stockbroker at that time, but I knew that this is where the world. So when I got into the career, I said, oh, let me look for EV cars. Tesla was one of them. Elon Musk was not even as popular as he is now. now. You know, but I still took and I and I actually did what I will not recommend most people to do. But I went all in in Tesla, and it all did very, very, very oh, wow. well for me. Yeah, look at did. you, yeah, part owner of Tesla. <laughs> exactly. You know, I'm just waiting for Elon to send my you know Model Three. Yeah, hit me up. <laughs> Love it. No, I think you've explained it, mm -hmm. but I still ask the question: In what way is investing better? Investing in stocks that is better than a simple savings account. So I get, I'll give you this scenario and you tell me. So think about it. Let's say I give you $10,000 and I say, Rion, hold this money for me. And you're like, sure, Shariel, I'll hold this $10,000 for you. And you and your infinite wisdom was like, you know what? John asked me to borrow some money the other day. Let me just take this $10,000 and lend it to John. And he will just have to pay me back at an 8% um, interest rate. And you're like, Shariel, Here's what, for me holding on, for you giving me this money to hold on to, I'll pay a little 2%, but I don't know you giving John 8%, right? So you making money on my money and I just get a little chukum schnookums. And when I look at inflation, inflation is at 6%. So my money is essentially losing value with you and you making money on my money. What did I just describe? A bank. And that is what is happening to your savings. But notice what I explain investing is you're now owning part of this company. So you're taking your money, just as you took my money and you started a whole empire. You're now taking your, I'm taking back my money and saying, here's what, I want to be a part of this empire. And I'm like, Rion, instead of you lending out my money, I'm going to invest in your company, own part of it, and you're still going to lend out my money and make money on it. We but I'll be making product. more. Correct. So you're and you can invest money. in the same banks. Of course you can. So, in, but instead you just change the narrative. I have no money in my Republic Bank savings account, none. So that's why some people, if what, when people say, you don't be afraid to talk about your investors up. If anybody come and kidnap me, think when they go in Republic Bank, they gonna be it's like, this girl got none. <laughs> but I have shares in Republic Bank. Ah. I have shares, I own parts of Republic Bank. So at the end of the day, cause yeah, I have credit card and I'm loading them. So they're making money off of me, but I also making money off of them because when profits come wrong, so after you charge me 5% on my car loan, when you pay your dividend as about 4%, I really pay in 1% on my car loan. That's how I look at it. And that's how I, every time now, since I'm part of this world, when I'm doing anything, I think about it in terms of that. Even my credit union, shareholding are too. So whenever I take a loan from them, I know I'm getting it on the back end in the form of dividends. So I'm always, so you, while you make it from me, I also make it from you. Boom. I love that. So then it's no longer, I am not your customer. I am not your, I'm not a borrower. You know, we are in a partnership. We have a mutually beneficial relationship. I give to you, you give back to me. Yeah. I love it. That's yeah. nice. Like you make it sound <laughs> so sexy. I love it. <laughs> it is. It, the world of finance is so sexy. But, like, but it's often normally like made to sound so complicated and you really do a good job of breaking it down. Now, for our grannies, our mummies, and everybody else out there, the idea of investing was something that they were introduced to in the form of mutual funds. Oh, yes. Everybody, Tanti, yes. you have a, you have a unit a trust year. account. Yes. Can you tell us what's a mutual fund mm -hmm. and in what ways, what are the pros and cons of it versus stocks and bonds and investing? Okay, in so a mutual fund is literally like a basket of stocks and bonds and ETFs and all those different things. And actually, I went after we talk about mutual funds, we could jump into ETS because they're very similar, but still different. So just think of like we have a nice little fruit salad. 
So in our fruit salad, we have some apples, some watermelon, some cantaloupe, some grapes, some blueberries, some strawberries. All right? Um, luxury fruit. That's a very <laughs> expensive exactly. So now let's translate this into stock. So we have some, our Tesla and our... Um, our Tesla will be like our blueberries, our apple will be like our strawberries. You know, the apple would be like a uh, Coca Cola. You know, you know, you're, you're running the mill, you're there for you, but it's a good fruit. So, you your Coca Cola. <laughs> then you have your little pear that's your Disney. Then you'll have some buns, which might be because you know, some fruits have a little lettuce, which is a little dip. It's not so really a fruit, but it's still mixing in. So, that's like your buns. So, it's like a mixture of assets. Or asset classes as we call it right and you might have some fixed it some cash in there right that might be like a little cherries a little governor plum you know so some mutual funds will have cash that gives it a liquid asset so it's literally a mixture of stocks and bonds and maybe some cash in there that gives you this investment product so instead of you taking the risk of investing in Apple on its own or Tesla on its own or a bond on its own you now have a weighted portfolio you now have introduction into all of these different assets so you don't take so what that does is if the price of apple shoots up and the price of tesla goes down if you own those things individually your portfolio is going to be you know have a lot of huge swings but in mutual funds because there's so many different things in it it kind of balances off the portfolio all right so a mutual fund, if the if individually you invested in Apple and Tesla and Apple gave you five percent, Tesla gave you ten percent, and I'm just calling arbitrary figures, of course, then individually you'd have a return of fifteen percent. But because now you are in a mutual fund, it's not just your money, it's a pool of the, of other investors' money, that will now have to be split amongst the group. So if it's five of us there, that fifteen percent now has to be split amongst the five of you. So you get three percent. All right, so you see the difference is as a investor in the company solely you take on all the risk all right so you take on if the thing goes up you get all the glory if it goes down you know it, you have to wait till it goes back up in a mutual fund it's kind of a little bit safer you know that's why they have that's why unit trust is like a national type because still it's safe so of course when we know safe the returns do be a little bit lower but that's why you have a balanced portfolio so you have a little bit of everything and what these investment persons did in their infinite wisdom they created ETFs and ETFs is exchange traded funds and what's an exchange traded fund is is essentially a mutual fund but mutual funds don't trade on the stock market ETFs do so as a mutual fund you have to go to like a unit trust you have to go like a guardian asset to get a mutual fund you have to go to some of the banks and get a mutual fund but an ETF you can trade through a broker you okay. can do it on your own. Okay. You don't have to go through. So a mutual fund has to be professionally managed. That's one of the characteristics of a mutual fund. So I can't just go and say, hey, I go and do a mutual fund. No, you have to have, meet certain tenants. It has to be professionally managed. You have to get SEC approval, those types of things. An ETF, there are thousands of ETFs on. So you can get a technology ETF. You can get a financial services ETF. You can get a robotics ETF. You can get a genome ETF. And genome, of course, as we know, that is when you take gene technology to, you know, do things like cell revitalization. I know I'm speaking your language now. Um, so just for your audience, um, you could get ETFs on um, literally anything, you know, any category you could get it on. Consumer discretionary items, you could get it on um, literally their ETFs, they're over 10,000 ETFs. So it's like a vast and the difference is you can trade those. There's actually an ETF, I actually had it on my um, watch list. And I saw the price came to my target price of 215 US dollars where you can buy all the stocks on the stock market. Yeah, it's called the VTI, the Vanguard Total, Total Index. And you can literally buy all the stocks that are traded on the US stock market. You can buy it in that one ETF. There's an ETF which is the top 500 companies called the SPY, the um, SPY. You can get the top 500 companies that trade in the US. You can get an ETF with all those companies in it. So I hope that helps to clear it mm -hmm, up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so listen, this real investing, as I say, it, it is such an interesting and as you call it, sexy world out there because there's so much. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm you know? than getting richer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? And you don't have to, to stress about, okay, which stock is going to be the next one? If you like technology, just buy a technology ETF. 
If you like financial services and always love financial services, banks make money. Recession, no recession, banks make money. All right, so you can get a financial services ETF. You know, if you like, um, some people into like wars and guns and stuff, you get an ETF, you know that. If you are environmentally conscious, there's ESG investing, which is environmental, social, governmental. So they make sure that, you know, the companies that you're investing in are uh, hitting those um, social responsibility scores. You can get an ETF for that. Like, literally, the sky's the limit. So, Shariel, what is the minimum amount that one needs to invest because i think on one of my episodes we discussed prenups and in the discussion it was about whether or not prenups are really like a thing for richer people is there room for a prenup in lower socioeconomic households mid and especially with millennials and i think the same thing the same thought process often applies to investing where people think that's for rich people. It's reserved for the rich. What's the minimum amount one needs to begin investing? So, I mean, that's a question that I get all the time. People like, but I don't money to invest. I don't have money to buy bills and groceries, uh, pay bills and buy groceries. And I always tell people that then you're always, you're never going to make money. Because if you get paid and you don't pay yourself first, you're just working to pay Massey and to pay TNTech and Massa. But what about you? You can start up an investment portfolio with a local portfolio for $2,500 TT dollars. You know, I mean, I tell people, stretch your hand a little bit and do 10000 because $2,500, you know, it's not really going to get you very far. The cheapest stock in our stock market is probably about $1, $2, but it's not the best company. Some of the best companies, you know, they sell for a little bit more, like 20 50 you know, 100 that kind of thing. So you don't want to save too little and you also too you want to make this a discipline you want to make this a habit you know so you want to at least i say you can do less but i always tell people try for ten thousand tt dollars for a local portfolio but interactive brokers which is a international brokerage room one of the best in the us they have opened up their band and you can as a trinidadian open up an account and you can start with a minimum of a thousand us dollars i'm pretty sure it's low but again you don't want to i mean an amazon stock is three thousand us all right a google is two thousand five hundred and we will actually they're actually doing something called a stock split which means that they're going to basically reduce the price of the stock but for current shareholders it will increase the number of stocks that they that have they so own. Kinda, correct so it will kind of make them whole but for new interested investors you will now be able to buy these stocks at like 100 150 us dollars so a thousand us could get you a good amount of stocks but really try you know to save up and you know do as much as you can because just remember the more you put out is the more you make because remember it's a multiplying game and once that number continues to increase that multiplication and that product is going to be greater and greater and greater now in the name in the name of accessibility what very often happens when doing financial business is that a lot of us as customers are surprised by the fees what are the average brokerage what are the associated fees with getting into investing um so the stock exchange has been very kind to kind of put a capped fee of 1.5 percent so most brokers kind of follow that for stocks but if you're doing things like bonds and other things there's no um cap to fee like it is for stocks so i would say if your broker is charging anywhere between two percent and under that's a manageable fee right and that could be two percent per transaction or two percent per annum right i think that's a manageable amount anything a little bit more could be pricing here because remember assets so stocks will give you an indefinite amount of return because as a company, it depends on the performance of the company, right? And how long you're in it. And how long you're in it. But bonds, they tend to have like a fixed rate. So I should probably go in to explain what a bond is because it's a term that I've been um, using very loosely. A bond is literally a debt instrument. So a company, instead of going to a bank or a financial institution to get a commercial loan, a company would be like, you know what, let me go out to investors because bank is going to charge them 14%, but the investor will happily take a 5%, a 6%, a 7%, even an 8% interest rate, right? Commercial loans, 
uh, like from 10% plus 14% is like the average of a commercial loan. So a company is like instead of going to pay 14%, I will go out to investors and I will ask them to to lend me the money and I will pay them an uh, interest rate of anywhere between a bond interest rate could be anywhere between three. So I would say about eight percent you tend to see, and they will pay you that semi annually. Whereas with a bank, they'll have to pay that back monthly. So you see where companies will choose to float a bond as we call it or put out a bond rather than taking a loan right so that's what a bond is so for bonds because they're priced a little bit differently and usually bonds of course because it's a loan it's usually to fund some kind of big project you would an institution like a, a financial institution or investment house they will buy a large piece of a bond and then they will parcel it out to, cl to retail clients so that's why they kind of put set their own price in because it depends on how much they paid for the bond how much they bought and that type of thing so then so the fees on bonds could vary but most times most book most investment houses will charge like a flat rate a two percent rate per annum to clients who have investment portfolios and i think that's a little bit better because when you have like an annual management fee it allows you to charge at least where i will get shepherd securities we charge a per annum fee of 1.25 percent and clients could be trading in and out that clients every day they, they play in the market in and out up and down i'm not saying that that's a strategy that i encourage but it allows you to do that right so it allows you to buy as much because you're just paying this one flat fee if you're paying a per transaction fee you should try and do a buy and hold portfolio because you're paying per transaction so you can't be in and out because every time you're in and out there's a fee that's being charged to you so i say if you're planning to be up and down and investing like warren buffett go with a managed fee an annual managed fee but if you plan to do play the long game as i like to say a buy and hold then you can go with like a more transaction based fee and of course it's a conversation that you have with your financial advisor feel free to reach out with me i actually remember i was invited to speak to with minds of tnt and jay he was on the panel and it so happened that where i previously worked he also um invested and he said he, he went after I gave my presentation and made investments on so sexy and everybody was excited and fired up. He's like, hey, well, you don't get too excited, make sure and ask her about the fee system because that's one thing that he didn't know. And I was very disappointed because having worked for this piece, I'm like, but we are very explicit and we are supposed to, as investment professionals, be very explicit with our fees. So you, that's a conversation you must have with your investment advisor. That's a conversation that I always have. And I even advise clients on how to go about you know choosing a fee you know because I know a lot of times too these fees are packed with the investment professional salary so they would of course go in their own interest, interest. you know but at the end of the day I would say there's only one Sharia about it like I try looking and searching for another one there's only one so if you name each on the road they'll know it's you and I go Kia <laughs> right. right love to show up in front of people podcasts and be all over the place Nah, yeah, have to find. So I always try to be very explicit with how you know, and I'm an avid investor in my own self, like in terms of my portfolio. So I've been making money, <laughs> like. <laughs> so there's no need to around people because you're good. No need because I re listen early investment test. I just wish I did Bitcoin. Understood. Because then I'd probably be in Dubai. I'm somewhere. gonna talk yeah, to you. I could uh, marry you. Streaming live from Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> I'd fly you up. You know. Oh, I love. <laughs> <laughs> so from what I understand from the explanation, if I have a stock, I'm a part owner, if I have a bond, that company owes me money. Correct. But I don't own them. Correct. What happens to stock owners and bond owners when a company goes bankrupt? I love that question because I was going to, if you didn't ask me, I was going to be like, so what do you think happens? So if you own a business and you owe somebody money and that business goes bankrupt, well, when we go for loans to the bank, don't they hold things as collateral? Because why? They coming back to take them thing when things go south. So bondholders are higher in the pecking order than stockholders. So when you, because you're the owner of the company, you have to take the risk. If you owe somebody money, you yeah. gotta pay them. You want to own 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 this debt with free. <laughs> it's like when you buy a car. Now you have that responsibility for that car. So if you hit the car. It's yours now. You can't go back to us and be like, I the car. Car. Be like, I don't own the car. 
that your responsibility understand right? so bondholders are higher in the pecking order before stockholders so when a company goes into um liquidation or it's filed for bankruptcy bondholders are paid before stockholders okay right so when you sell for the assets you pay your bondholders first and then whatever is left back then the shareholders get if it have if it have they don't have well welcome to the land of business owning understood yeah so there's some risk involved right and that's why i talked about investing in companies that you know have longevity so for example blackberry we all remember blackberry and a lot of people think blackberry don't exist no blackberry exists they just don't make smartphones but blackberry now provides intel for governments oh wow exactly and if you and as you think so my mom would have mentioned the situation my father and flashback she should learn from her father i don't want to just take away from you my husband was like we were building this home we had all a plan i said oh gosh i want to relax i want a keratin my keratin was a big thing then two thousand how much a keratin i said well two thousand the man started to get on he carry on oh god we have to do we have house to do saving 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 boop drop dead gone disappeared 10 years now mommy and your character in the hair. And your character in the hair. I want me. I'm not evil. I'm not evil. I was character in for the front row on my back. So the point I tried to make still live life. Yes, you know. I will travel. I'll 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 travel. I think I'm going to go to Mexico for Carnival. I was going to go for my birthday in September, then I Google and they said September is the rainiest month. I was just like, we're not okay, doing that. Yeah, no, I'll travel. I usually yeah, travel for Carnival. Travel. If it's not rainy, yeah, you go somewhere. Yeah, that's the plan. Yeah. All right, Mom. <coughs> so exit quietly or let me know when you're leaving. So you okay. can pause, please. Please stop. Right. That's how we were able to find the person so my dad was murdered. That's how we were able to find the person I married to my father because he had a Blackberry phone and all the person changed his SIM card, the BBM pin doesn't change. So because I had my father's BBM pin, I just started messaging the person that had the phone and thankfully, or you know, it just so happened that it was a young boy who said, pretty girl. I was like, hey, hey, who is this young girl? And he started telling me all his business. He's like, yeah, you want to come and do drugs? You want to come and see my guns? That's how the police caught the guy who murdered my father so blackberry they realized that okay apple and samsung came and took us out of the cell phone market but we, we not attract people exactly so, so we go just, we will dive into that wow but, and that's why a lot of people don't know about the business because the average on the street don't really need that, that type of service but governments do you know what i mean in trinidad um parliament they talk, they're spying on us they're spying on us well, I can't say if they are or they aren't, but there are companies that can, you know, and if they really need Intel, that, and that's why there's all these push for all these like WhatsApps and signals to be end-to-end -end encrypted. So where you can't be spying on us, so it's pushing these cryptocurrencies where, you know, everything is out in the open. So companies, you have to look for companies that are future-proofing themselves, who are in businesses. So like, for example, companies like Disney, to realize park shut down disney the streaming service disney plus right so and they forced any disney plus down your throat because some of my favorite shows i'm going to disney plus yeah i'm a big big dancer when he starts fan and the next season is going to be on disney plus exactly right talking about streaming services so i know even on the i was so impressed that on slam and on 90 um 4.7 star and 96.1 they were talking about how Netflix stock plummet when they lost 200,000 su um, subscribers. So Netflix has 222 million subscribers, right? No, 222.8 million subscribers. They lost 200,000. So now they have 222 million point six subscribers. Is there any big difference in that number? No, two hundred thousand. No, two hundred. No, That's but their stock went down. Their stock is at the lowest it has ever been since, like over five years. And they only lost two hundred thousand. So let's think about that in dollars. If you have two hundred and twenty-two million point two hundred and twenty-two point eight million. These are the paying subscribers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. So they're so because in my household. 
all right oh god i hope my sister's handy tim reed don't come for me but in my household my mom pays me netflix and she lives abroad so we get you know access to the international but it's three of us so it's four users so that means that that number but they only account for my mother because she's the paying one right and i'm sure that happens in a lot more households so it could be it could be a billion because i do believe that there are much people watching netflix as they are on instagram mm -hmm. or facebook mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is over a billion right but let's think about it back to my example you have i give you 222.8 million dollars and i come to you and say rian give me back 200 thousand you will gladly give me back because 200 thousand compared to 222 million is nothing it's a drop in the bucket that's like if i give you 20 thousand and i have to back for two dollars drop in the buckets right but their stock price plummet yes okay market conditions are also not the best and a lot of stocks are also but i also think a lot of that because of that news of that small decline and that sparked a whole conversation you know amongst a lot of people people talking about well should i get rid of netflix and so people start saying i find the content change i find the content no longer but and it started spark and then people from this fair all of a sudden something that was not a topic is now a topic so now people are panic selling their netflix stocks you know what i was doing buying because you know what, last year, and this is a lot of funny story, one of my really good, good, good friends. We were, we both got COVID together last year, and we had to quarantine. So I had, I bought Netflix stocks about $494, and I sold it about $694. It went up to $700, and I was beating up over those, because I was like, some of Netflix stocks. But last year, I was like, it's all good, eh? It's all real. I took my $200, well, my 200 times the number of shares I had profit and now I could come back in at $200 because at the end of the day yes there's a lot of um, competition in the streaming services but I still don't believe because Hulu is not available for us yes Disney Plus is available for us. I do have Disney stocks already but unless a lot of these other streaming services HBO and stuff I mean yeah they have good content I think but it's not enough for me by the time season 3 of Bridgerton come out that stock will go back up. Listen, today, literally, I just checked my phone. My friends are not. This is not a drill. Season 5 of Selling Sunsets is out. Love that, too. All right? So, at the end of the day, Invent and Anna, great. Like, I still believe, and what Netflix is also doing, they are now diversifying. So, there are two persons from Trinidad and Tobago that work for Netflix. One is the chief animator, and one of them acted in Invent and Anna. He was the doctor at the end. Uh, so hope not no spoilers sorry guys i hope not spoiling oh wow but he's a trend yeah so they now so now they bring in and that Trinidadian guy you know he came and said yeah from Trinidad. so they also the um lady uh whistle down the dark skin indian girl who's very popular now uh, no well she's from she's from she's she's um indian roots but she's from the uk okay right? but no, um, that is the the lady who housed them the the host who hosted um i forgot the names edwina and sham a lady sham well, well they she hosted them the lady that hosted them the negro lady mm -hmm. who's very good friends with the queen she has shown that in she was actually on ttt with lisa with them understood so and those sorts of things draw in more viewers of course, because and then even too the fact that the um indian community they talked about how you know edwina and Sham they didn't do their proper um um, they didn't do their proper due diligence because they mixed up so many words and it, but it caused a lot of talk. So now a lot of people from India is like, well, what is this? Why is this, why is this Everybody's talking thing? Talking exactly. Understood. And that, is, and that is how they create the buzz. Yes, okay, Adrian, they have a lot of competition, but to me, the only really show on Adrian that everybody talks about, everybody loves is Euphoria. And I watch it and I find that she's so head. I mean, Zendaya, real brilliant actor. But I find it shows so like at the end of the day, Netflix gives you a lot a variety. of variety. You know, and I'm, this is not a, a buzz to go and buy Netflix. So this is what I did. I believe that come here, love they put a lot of thought-provoking documentaries out. So the Cambridge, Cambridge Analytica, mm -hmm. one that I watched the other day. I watched probably watched it about twenty thousand times. Social dilemma, talking about the ills of social media. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I was like literally like, but wait now. Netflix is the same damn thing because after they tell me how bad social media is and how bad all these repeated content showing my what else a recommendation I mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the CEO of Netflix said that people think our greatest competition is like social media and other streaming platforms no our greatest competition is sleep because once you sleep and you can't watch Netflix you know so that's how these tech companies think and I mean while 
as a you know socialist or somebody who enjoys sleeping i do not agree with his statement but it just shows how that leader thinks he thinks you know what let me give content so i can keep all in night binge watching once you're awake and watching and and to be honest i real binge you know when i don't have anything i would take a weekend and i would finish bridget's on like literally wake up washing dishes uh, to finish it because I know I'm going to delete my Netflix during really week because I had to buckle down and get to, get to work. Understood. You know? So, and that's how you go about choosing. I know we went from a little tangent, but this is how, I mean, of course, you have to also evaluate the books. But that's an example of you showing that you believe in the brand and that gush was you showing that I really go with my Netflix stock. It went down today, but I, Shariel, holding on. But I sold it, so now I get to come back in. For cheaper. Right? But she found sometimes you have to listen to your gut because my gut just told me, you know, Shariel, come out to this stuff. Yes, this thing went to $700. I beat up a little bit, but I was like, Shariel, that's how the game was work. That's how the thing was go. You know? So don't beat up too much about it. And now, look, you see a few months later because I COVID in October. So now in the in April of the year, and look again, a chance to come back in. Understood. And to buy this stuff. You know? And now it's a really brilliant time. I was actually watching because I love my YouTube, love Google. Listen. You see Google, you see when that stock split? Oh God. <laughs> Y'all start calling me Larry Page or Sergio Brim because I am going to go to town on Google stock because I love it. Literally, everything is Google it. Like I tell everybody. The other day I was in the car with my friend and he was like, how do you do X? Google it. And then he realized he didn't have his phone. He left his phone by me. And I was like, you see, look how powerful Google is. You know, Google is one of those companies and YouTube I was just I was watching YouTube and he was saying, you know, now is the best time for so a lot of millennials are like, oh my God, we went through the financial crisis, the pandemic, you know, and they see any the crisis, but they're not seeing the opportunity. And as you would have mentioned to me, you said, you know, a lot of things that you'd have gone through in your life brought you to where you are. And I'm sure it's a lot of trials. The glory moments do get a yeah. Of course, we celebrate the news, but it's really the, it's overcoming those trials. And the pandemic is only times I made most of my money invested. I would assume that things like, like Netflix and like YouTube with people being home a lot more like Google, people need to work um, Google Teams and all those things that have gone up. Zoom has been trading on our stock market for a, for longer than the pandemic. I did not even know Zoom existed Same here. before the pandemic. Same here. And that stock branch just shoot up all of a sudden. Zoom. We did not know about Zoom in 2019. What was Zoom? Microsoft Teams also existed. What I used to like, what was happening? Like before the pandemic, like how used to how like how we used to do this? Like how like what was this? We used to do it, you know, but we just never paid any money Mind to it. it. But now in the pandemic, Google Meets, Zoom, the Microsoft Teams, everything, Instagram Lives. Instagram Lives will burst during the pandemic. Right, because before the pandemic, people just used to go on live on the treadmill or driving the car and well, singing, singing into the live. screen. Yeah, I did not even know they had that picture yeah. until the pandemic. And my thing is. That's the companies you want to invest in. Companies that have the tools that for any situation. They pivot and they keep growing. That's how you choose companies and that's how you show true resilience. You don't look for the crisis. Like, why is this happening? You literally say, okay, this is the current situation. So it's like, okay, we just came out of the pandemic. There's a war. How do I capitalize on this? We're not investing in the war, Sharia. <laughs> We're not, not investing in the war. But again, this is happening. So how do I, what do I do? So there's a likelihood that the U.S. can no longer be a superpower. Should I be so heavily invested in the U.S.? Understood. That's what I mean. Not, no, God, not going to say, <laughs> No, thank you. So it's like, see, I, okay. see that tank over there, I wonder. <laughs> Understood. But it also showed the vulnerabilities as well in the financial services. One of the things that they did to Russia was cut them off from the SWIFT system, meaning that people in Russia couldn't really send money out, couldn't really access their money. So it shows that, hey, if they ever do that to trim that, they just switch off that, then you're cut off. What is the alternative? So I actually started investing in crypto during this time. Again, this is not, I'd say, to go and invest in crypto. That's what I did because I said, you know what? Because that's how Russians are now, and Ukrainians are now surviving. They are using cryptocurrency. The cryptocurrency. Correct. So I said, you know what? If this ever happened in Trinidad, because the, the reality is we don't know. We had a coup. We had a coup. If somebody else decides to come and do another one and you know any country any decide to cut us off or even our government decide to cut us off we need to have alternatives we need to have a backup plan and that's what investing of it gives you opportunity 
looking at what the situation is around is happening around you and you start investing to suit so people who invested in like my who I do my Instagram I said Kai she's like Shariel all these crews she loves both of us love to travel she's like all these crews and stuff they don't know all these airlines they don't know but the pandemic must come to end we had to travel things had to open back up she invested now she's smiling because things open back up all these stocks and that airline back. stock is going up understood all the cruises, everything is back to normal so her portfolio is also back up people are like can you mad why are you doing that at the end of the day don't let fear drive your behavior you have to think future you know so but i've gone off on a i love it no, no no i love it i love it <laughs>